And I can tell you, and I can tell folks who are listening, it is not a fun conversation when you have to go to your your significant other and say, well, we owe a hundred grand in taxes. (laughs) Welcome to the American Med Spa Association podcast, Medical Spa Insider. This week, AmSpa founder Alex Tiersch is speaking with Nick Liguri from the firm Liguri Accounting. Okay, welcome everybody. It's weird we're doing this like video now, which is like this new highfalutin thing for us at AmSpa. <laughs> um, but Alex Tiersch here, Medical Spa Insider, um, the podcast of the American Med Spa Association. We talk to business owners and professionals across the spectrum about what they do, what makes them tick, and how they can help you as uh, med spa providers. Today, we are very lucky to have on the AmSpa hotline, which is now a video hotline, which is still going to take some getting used to. Uh, we're on YouTube now. We're going to be, you're going to be famous, Nick. So get ready. Uh, Nick Ligori of Ligori Accounting. Um, we have an accountant on board here at AmSpa now who, believe it or not, Nick, and this is the truth, we have been talking to folks about different accountants about getting um, an actual accountant on to become part of the AmSpa team and be part be, be a vendor. And we've had a lot of difficulty. So you are one of the first who has taken, t- but it's a super important um, piece of what we all do. We, we, we certainly have, we've had some, you know, some financial folks and things like that, but to have an actual accountant be involved in AmSpa, taking care of AmSpa members is very exciting. Thank you so much, how are you doing? What's the latest? Yeah, doing great. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, this is going to be an exciting one, accounting. I mean, everyone's going to buckle up. We're uh, we're ready to roll here. We're, um, yeah, we're really excited to be part of AmSpa. Um, we've had a great experience so far. I think it's, um, there's a big need there for accounting, bookkeeping, tax services in this space. Um, it's booming. It's a big growing industry. So uh there's yeah. a lot of compliance issues to to keep track of. So we're we're ready to help. We're happy to help. Um, now you're talking people. our language, compliance. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> so so um, talk to me a little bit about like, um, you know, obviously we've got all sorts of different types of resources that we offer through AmSpa. What drew you to aesthetics? And 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 I think you know you're you're one of the, certainly one of the only, if not the only, accounting firm who's 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 become a, a vendor. And there's a huge need for that. But what drew you to aesthetics and and med spas in particularly? And what do you hope to offer um, that you think is is, is needed? Yeah, so it was um, really organically that we found ourselves in this space. Um, so just a little background about Liberia Accounting to give a little perspective. Um, we're based out of Exeter, New Hampshire, so we're on the East Coast. Um, and I started the business actually right right before COVID started. So um, it, we've seen a lot of growth over a few a short amount of time here. Um, and one of the earlier clients that I started working with was a med spa uh, in the space. So from that and some referrals, and we became members of the New Hampshire uh, Medical Aesthetics Organization as well. Yeah. Um, so just getting more involved in the space, uh, we've had really great, um, it, we've had a good opportunity to provide valuable services to those owners. Um, you know, oftentimes the owner of a med spa is a practitioner by trade, right? They're not necessarily a business, you know, business person. They may have gone into entrepreneurship just to, you know, to leave what they were doing to start this, this practice. So um, we've been able to provide a lot of guidance, keep them in compliance as far as keeping their books in order um, and help them down that road. So it's been great to provide the the insights in the, uh, you know, information from a financial perspective. And that's been, been rewarding from, you know, from our end as bookkeepers, accountants. So that's really yeah, what for sure. got us into the space and it's it's grown from there and we've just continued to pursue it because the clients are awesome to work with we've found so we've you know there's a need for our services and it's a good fit for us so it's a win-win I think yeah I want to I want to talk a little bit about um the need because one of the things that we've found uh, across the board is that you know this is um an industry full of very very passionate and thriving um providers yeah. who want yeah to do good for the industry. They want to offer these tools for their, for for their patients. They want to grow. They're very passionate about the industry and what they do, but um, they tend to, to be a little, you know, uninformed about 
how to run a business, certainly the the legal um, compliance uh, parts of things, as well as just some of the basic business um, 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 things that they need to learn. I, are have you found that that folks have been um, pretty receptive to what you're offering and, 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 you know, selling accounting services is a lot like selling legal services. It's not the most sexy topic, <laughs> but right. it's super important. And, and so you, people have to know it. I mean, what's the reception been so far? And are, are, is, is this an industry where you think that you can, you, you can help a lot of folks? Yes. A hundred percent. I think the, like you said, it's not the most exciting thing to try and sell people, but there's, there's a need and there's a, a lot of value there. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, someone starting a new business, they're going to try and save, keep costs low, do as much as they can themselves. But at some point you get to the stage where I need to offload some of all these tasks on my plate. The administrative stuff especially is hugely valuable to be able to outsource. So that at that point, especially like it's, it's an easy sell, you know, our, the fee for our services can be covered with a couple extra procedures being done, you know, so there's a lot of value there. Just, okay, my time's better spent elsewhere, seeing patients, um, running my business, training my staff, those type of things. So that alone is a huge value, just getting that time back. But then also having the expertise of professionals handling your books, handling your tax planning, um, and that other guidance that we can provide uh, with our experience in the industry. So For that sure. as a package, I think is is a a huge value to business owners who met, you know, in this space, especially. Yeah. So um, one of the, the, the key questions that I had to learn as a business owner a long time ago, and I, and I know there are folks who struggle with this or have questions about this um, as they go is, is a, a lot of times they will hire a, um, an accountant um, or a bookkeeper and they, they want, certain things like advice on how, on financial advice, financial planning, things like that. And, and there's a difference between what a bookkeeper does, what an accountant does and kind of what a, like a, like a chief financial officer does. Right. Um, right. Talk about some of that, like what, like what services you offer and, and, and how they fit into the grand scheme of things. Cause I've found that people, people don't necessarily know what a bookkeeper does versus what an accountant does versus what, you know, an advisor does. Right. I think every, people often think accounting, bookkeeping, and tax are all the same thing. And they're really not. There's a lot of, there's some nuance there, but there's some separate steps there. So we'll start with bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is really recording what has happened. So that's okay. making sure you're tracking all money coming in, money going out, categorizing things properly, make sure your finances are in order, essentially. So that's the big thing with bookkeeping, it's looking at the past. I think that's a good way to think of it is so tracking what's happened in the past. Um, and then CFO or advisory services are, are more looking at the future. So looking at what's happened, but then how does that impact our future going forward? So the CFO services are more, okay, we have, we have a business, we have goals. You started this business for a reason, whether it's financial or growing it to you know, multi-locations or expanding, whatever it may be, you have goals as a business owner and you need to, your finances need to be tracking that in order to reach those goals. So you build off of the bookkeeping component. That's, you know, the important thing is keeping that up to date. And then the CFO is looking forward based on where we are today, what our numbers look like today. What does that look like as we move forward? How can we reach these goals? How can we continue to build upon what we have? Um, and then tracking it as you go is the other piece that's kind of part of the CFO um, right. component is, are we actually meeting those targets down the line as we're looking forward? Um, but it's, it has to be a whole package. And then when you talk about taxes as well, you know, as you're planning forward, you have to be prepared for taxes because if you wait till the end of the year, it's oftentimes too late. You know, you're, you're finding yourselves in a hole. Um, where if you're doing planning quarterly at least or throughout the year, you can really set yourself up so tax season isn't as scary as as many people uh, think it may be. So um, yeah. that's where we what we offer is that full service package. So it's the bookkeeping is the foundational component because that's that's the important step from a compliance standpoint. And when you get to tax season, the bookkeeping is crucial to have the information you need to file taxes. But then you know, looking at the tax position throughout the year, doing the CFO advisory services as well, making sure you're hitting the goals or planning along the way. Um, 
you know, is is unique in some ways where it's like, we're not just bookkeeping and we're going to send you to somebody else to do taxes. We're looking at the big picture for you and your picture as a whole to make sure you're on track yeah. throughout the year. So no, it's 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 awesome to have that kind of in one in one place because people tend to people tend to not know what they need. You know, there's a lot yeah. of they don't know what they don't know. And and this is one area certainly where I, I always, you know struggled with, you know, I, I would call my account and my accountant that, that we use, he was, he prepared our taxes. That That's what he did. That was, that was the, right. if he had other questions, you know, he could answer them, but it wasn't necessarily strategic in the way that I needed. Whereas it took me a while to find somebody. Okay. Well, we need, we need different people for different, for different things. What's the biggest need as far as you can tell from, from folks in this industry, if there's one more than others, like what, what's, what's, what strikes you as, as where people are lacking in this industry? Yeah, the biggest thing I think really is the the tax planning component and, you know, getting ahead of that. Um, it's one of those things, if you're not planning for it throughout the year, um, the the growth we see with some of the, especially newer med spas, where it's like from year one to two and then two to three or, you know, three to five, like that growth happens so quickly. And you're going from, you know, a modest amount of income maybe in the business to it getting pretty significant quickly. And if you're not planning from a tax standpoint during that growth phase, you're going to get hit with a big tax bill come the end of the year. And it's going to be, okay, now we're playing catch up to, you know, get the, have the cash flow to, to pay that bill. And then you're in a cycle of playing catch up on paying your taxes. So the biggest mistake I think is not paying quarterly taxes when you need to be as a business owner yeah. um, and just not planning throughout the year for that tax bill that's coming at the end. So, um, you know, the goal is to, to be paying taxes you want to have a profitable business and um you know the the effect of that is taxes at the end but you know we obviously yeah. try to mitigate that best you can but you know you want you want to be profitable you want to be successful so it's the big thing is just planning for that and um same thing with newer business newer spas or newer businesses in general um the switch from being a w-2 employee and having taxes withheld throughout the year then having to do that on your own and pay quarterly taxes or pay tax yeah. at the end of the year. That's where you, where people get trapped most common, I would say. Now, I, I remember, I still remember to this day, um, and gosh, this, this my, my wife should be here talking with this too, because she remembers it as well. <laughs> but like, there is a, there, there is a time as a business owner when, I mean, the numbers start getting bigger, right? So you're talking about multiples of, of, of what you're looking at before. Um, yeah. And there's this, there's there, the, the tax planning aspect of it, um, becomes important when you get things like phantom income, right? Or, um, or, or, you know, carry, you know, income that carries over to the next year. And I still remember this very day, we got to a point where we were trying to plan and we were doing our best with our accountant and planning, paying quarterly taxes and all that. But we got to the end and like, yeah, you know, you, there, there's a $85,000 tax bill due. And, you know, <laughs> at some point, as you grow and you get bigger, you start to to plan and have backup things and be able to figure that out. But the first yeah. few times, it's terrifying because right. you're like, I'm sorry, you said how much? Right. And you have to actually then come up with that money and it becomes really, really tough. It's it's a difference kind of in the way you have to think. I, 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 how are you dealing with that with people? Because there's people that are, that are, that you're right, they get to, they go from zero to a hundred very, very quickly. And you've got to figure out these taxes or otherwise you're going to be, you're going to be paying um, a large chunk at a time when you don't anticipate it. And that is tough. Right. And, and there is obviously some seasonality in this industry too. Yeah. So making sure you're planning for that too, or it's like, okay, the year can be going fine on track with kind of what you're expecting through the summer. And then the fall ends up being great. And then you have this big profit that happened those last few months of the year. And now how do we plan for that or adjust for that? So um, yeah, that's the big thing. It's like being ready for it and staying on top of it. I, ideally we work with our clients and we're doing tax planning on a quarterly basis. I mean, some clients were just doing bookkeeping for, but others were doing that, you know, planning throughout the year. And that's our ideal scenario is we're meeting with you quarterly. So you're staying on top of that all year long um, to make sure we're paying in enough and staying on staying ahead of the game. Because you can get into a cycle where it's like, like you said, you get this surprise tax bill. Now I have to come up with the money and then now I can't pay my estimates for next year. So then this yes. cycle gets, you know, perpetuated. Um and it, it's hard to get out of it until, you know, you have, you've planned and set the money aside to do it. So 
Um, yeah, so yeah, and I can tell you, and I can tell folks who are listening, it is not a fun conversation when you have to go to your your significant yeah. other and say, "Well, we owe a hundred grand in taxes <laughs> right, right, <laughs> that we right. didn't plan for, or whatever it is." And yeah, and so. yeah, and it's a difficult situation on our end to present that to a client sometimes too. And but the biggest thing is like, okay, th this is where you are, this is the situation, but here's the plan to get get yourself ahead of the game in the future. Like it may take a year to get there, but here's the roadmap. And, and that's the big thing is like, okay, if we're proactive and can put a plan in place with you, it's going to make it, we're going to get through it together. We can yeah. work it out. We can get you on the right track. So um, it's all about planning and, and staying on top of the numbers. And really, again, like if you're not keeping up with your books to begin with, this is all impossible. You know, you have to have current data. You have to have accurate numbers to know where you're where you're at and where you're starting from as you're planning. So, um, which is why the bookkeeping is really our key services. And um, yeah, for sure. We, so, well, and 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 I found, I mean, two things. One, if you if you have a a large tax bill that you have to plan for, that means you're making money, and that's generally a good thing, right? Like, so you sure, want to yeah. you know you you want to make sure that you understand that. But right. the other thing is that it's. Um, it's 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 really difficult to get yourself in that mindset as an entrepreneur where you're where where you're focusing on your business and you're focusing on planning not only for how you're going to spend your money how you're going to you know reinvest money but how you're going to plan for taxes and the yep. minute you start adopting that mindset it makes it so much so much easier and it becomes second nature and it's something now that we've become very accustomed to thank god because it is a difficult it's a di and i've also and i'm cu i'm curious what your th thoughts on this like there's a lot of folks who just don't they don't pay attention to it until it's tax season. And then they're probably calling you in like March saying, Oh, right. our taxes are due. What do we do? Right. And then you're trying to climb out from up from a hole. Did you find that? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's, uh, unfortunately that's more probably the more common scenario Yeah, <laughs> is for that sure. people are, are coming after the fact and trying to figure out their tax situation rather than, you know, knowing going into tax season. So definitely common. Uh, if you're in that position, you're definitely not the only one that's for sure. Um, we see it all the time. Um, but right, I think the the thing is like getting yourself on the right foot is huge. It's like if you're not using some sort of accounting system too, that's a great place to start. There's a lot of great tools out there now. We use QuickBooks Online with our client base to to manage that. But it's like set up those automations, set up those systems that are going to take care of a lot of the administrative piece of it uh, or the compliance piece of it throughout the year. So you're not scrambling at the end of the year. So um you know, new business owners, I mean, there's tons of new new med spas popping up every day, right? There's lots of new owners, small or solo practitioners and smaller ones as well. And in those ones can definitely be um, the business owners who can get into the, the biggest trouble sometimes with taxes where it's like, again, not planning for it. First year, we'll see what happens and it ends up being great, really successful. So, which is awesome. And you have a good future ahead of you, but we got to make sure you get the tax piece squared away. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a challenge. I think the earlier, the better. I mean, the biggest mistake I think is just not planning, um, and trying to ignore that, that looming tax, tax deadline that's always coming. So, um, that's the big, well, thing so, so, so let me ask you is I guarantee there's somebody out there right now who's listening to this, who probably doesn't have a plan, um, doesn't necessarily even have a, a bookkeeper, um, yeah. who is thinking about taxes now for the first time and they're 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 a little scared about it because they they're probably behind their or maybe they they even are behind like actually behind on their taxes yeah. Yeah. what's the like what's the advice you give to them because it can be it can be scary and it can be daunting the thing that i always remember just the thought of digging into it is enough to make me put it off because it's so daunting what's the advice to them right. Yeah, I think the advice is, especially if you're behind on taxes, is reach out to a professional. Um, I think there's people will definitely feel embarrassed or, yeah. you know, have some sort of negative emotion tied to this. And that's the hardest thing to get past is like, okay, I need to confront this problem because it's only going to get bigger. The longer you wait, the higher that's the right. penalties are, the more interest is going to accrue on that tax bill. So, you know, confront it reach out to a professional who can help you get organized and on the right track. 
it may take a little time, especially if it's you are looking at previous years you need to catch up with, but it's going to be worth the the effort and the energy. And, um, you know, the thing we strive to do is like we focus with small business owners. So we don't have this giant book of tax clients that are not in our, you know, our main focus. We focus on the businesses and the business owners, and that's our that's our client base. So we make sure we have the availability and capacity to help business owners deal with these kind of problems because they're bound to come up. So um, I think make sure whoever you're working with, whoever your tax professional is, make sure they have the time for you. They're able to dedicate their attention to your problem and, and solving that because I think that's the industry, our industry as accountants, CPAs um, is aging. So there, there's definitely a shortage of CPAs and professionals in this industry. Um, so it's it's definitely important to find find one who's a good fit and who's going to be able to serve your needs. And and when you say aging, you mean the age of typical accountants is is increasing. It's not. Yeah. So yeah, okay. you know, there's less and less young CPAs or new CPAs every year. The statistics from the AICPA are it's clearly in decline. There's less kids coming out of college, you know, going the route of being CPAs. So there's a lot of factors there, um, which has probably had has uh has its own podcast lined up for itself <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah so that's the thing it's like there's a lot of cpas who are retiring so that's something a lot of people will face too over the few next few years if they haven't already where it's you know professionals in their 50s 60s 70s are are moving on retiring and a lot of people are going to be looking for new cpas so um yeah it's there's obviously a shift in in our industry too so that's something to be aware of and make sure you have a plan in place if your current yeah. you know, provider is, is going to be retiring or something along those lines. And you're an entrepreneur yourself. And um, right. how did you, how did you always want to be a CPA when you were like a young kid watching TV? Like, I want to do that someday. Or is your, is your yeah. like a family thing? How'd you get into it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, from a, a, as early as you can remember, I wanted to be a CPA. It was um <laughs> You know, either play professional sports or CPA. It was a toss up, but no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I would say, um, I'm a dozen, right? <laughs> I would say business has always been something, especially small business is something I've always been interested in. Um, so I, I come from, you know, my grandfather owned a small business. Um, we've had small business in my family as long as I can remember. So I've always been around that and always had that interest. Um, I, Kind of fell into accounting. It made it was what clicked with me as I was going through school and getting my education, and so that's the route I went. And I worked at a larger CPA firm for a while, and also worked at a small firm, and really enjoyed like working with small businesses. So that's where where what's led me to where I am, and working with the type of clients I like to work with is that small business owner. I can I really feel like I connect with, and um, you know, can understand that and understand the motivation and the 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 difficulties that come along with it. There's obviously a lot of upside, yeah. but there's also a lot of pressures and stress and and um, challenges that come too. So you know, yeah, for sure. I know that I'm not myself personally, but it can relate that with clients as well. Well, so. and you know the 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 other thing, and and in, in you said that there's you know the the age of accountants is is increasing, and the 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 plain fact of the matter is is that there's not enough accountants who deal with medical aesthetics and some of the unique issues that we have. We, we, we talk all the time to business owners, whether you're getting into, you know, whether it's a, some sort of a management services um, yeah. uh, account uh, you've got, you've got multiple businesses, you've got different States. Um, and, and it's really difficult for sometimes for these bookkeepers and these accountants to be able to track the flow of money and be able to figure out where it's all supposed to go. Um, right. And it's, it's, you need somebody who kind of knows the industry. Talk about kind of some of the unique things about this industry and how you've been able to deal with them over time. Yeah, right. There definitely are a lot of unique factors and compliance um, issues to deal with and make sure you're handling appropriately. Um, so yeah, with the MSO model, especially is one that can easily be um, muddled up a little bit. And, yeah. um, you know, on the bookkeeping end, especially there's, you have two distinct entities there and the ownership usually is, is structured differently. So it's, um, you know, we recommend that you have two separate books for those entities in all cases. 
Um, I think people obviously can run into trouble trying to do this themselves and trying to mm -hmm. pull it all together in one, you know, QuickBooks account or whatever software you're using. Um, and it's really important to make sure you're following that MSA agreement and you have that distinct separation from both a legal standpoint, a tax standpoint, just compliance in general. So um, that's something we can help navigate. We're familiar with that. So that's where we, um, you know, being understanding the industry uh, can bring some value to to just, you know, someone who isn't familiar. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of complexities, never mind just the different state to state issues, like you said, where we're in New Hampshire, which is one of the most probably lenient states as far as um, corporate practice of medicine goes. But we know there's obviously there's plenty of states throughout the country where there's um, all different ranges of compliance. So understanding that and knowing what you're dealing with, where you're established is important too. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And um, we we always recommend that folks find somebody. I'm glad you guys are doing this because we you know we want to recommend to people, they find a bookkeeper, they find an accountant, a professional who is in the industry, who knows the industry, who understands it. And be, because of these kind of, you know, nuances and idiosyncrasies that we get. Um, the, the other thing that I often talk to folks about is, is, is they tend to be um, nervous about cost and, and just kind of, you know, s similar with, with lawyers. The way I always see it, and, and I would love for your, your thoughts on this is that uh, to me, your, your accountant and your bookkeeper over time, should be saving you money as opposed to actually costing you money. And it's, and, and, yeah. and part of that comes into play when just giving, you know, advice on things like, you know, all the types of ways you can take advantage of being a small business owner and saving money, deducting money, you know, deducting expenses, you know, running expenses through, you know, obviously legitimate expenses through your, through your business. Um, it's a different mindset. So uh, talk a little bit about that and kind of and how folks try to get their, get in the right mindset to be to to be using the tax laws to their advantage. Right. And yeah, that's that's great. I think there is a lot to be said for that. And and being proactive is the big thing. Like if you don't know about it until you it's after the fact, there's only so much planning you can do. Um, you know, things like even just as simple as timing of when you're purchasing new equipment can make a big difference in your tax bill year to year. So okay. Um, things like that are are huge. Knowing the deductions you can take and what you can't. I think a lot of times often people are going to lean on the sides of running more things through their business than they really can or are eligible right. to, you For know, sure. technically speaking. And, you know, preventing that is also helpful. Like if you do run into an audit with the IRS, you want to make sure everything is is up to par and you're not exposing yourself to, um, you know, liability there too. So there's definitely some value there. And then with the, the planning side of things that we offer, um, you know, we think there's huge value. And if you know where you are now and have a really accurate picture of where you are, it's going to help you reach those goals more efficiently and make sure you're not overspending in certain things and making sure your metrics are in line with the industry. Because if there's certain things that are out of out of line, like you're leaving money on the table potentially. So um, I think we we can bring a lot of value in those areas as well as, you know, there's right. There's some cost to hiring or outsourcing these services, but there's a savings compared to hiring an internal person to handle it too. And you have the expertise of a team versus just one person too. So I think there's a lot there um, as well. So, right. um, awesome. yeah. So, um, God, we've already been going at it for half an hour, which is awesome. I mean, who yeah. knew that accounting and booking even could be so scintillating? <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, What's one thing you um wish kind of all of your clients would would know or would do like what's the one thing that you that you kind of think wish that that kind of was was more well known and then um and you, and you touched upon this a little bit but but what's the kind of the biggest mistake that, that that people make yeah i think um you know one thing that i i think people should know is to just to do tax planning ahead of time would be one the second big thing is start yourself off on the right foot and use a bookkeeping system of some sort. Even if you're not outsourcing it, don't try and do it in Excel. Don't try and keep a pile of receipts. Spend the $30 a month and get yourself a QuickBooks subscription and start setting that up. Um, I think that's the the easiest, easily the most um, you know, worthwhile investment as you're starting. Um, 
because it's going to make your life easier. Even if you're not doing things perfectly right off the bat, just having that going and having that record system in place is going to get you off on the right foot. And then if you are working with a professional in the future, they're going to have the tools in place to, to make, you know, get things in line the way they need to be. So um, I think that would be my one biggest mistake I see oftentimes or a piece of advice would be to start, start off on the right foot with the right systems in place. You know, if you're starting your, a med spa, like you're going to make sure you have the right um, EMR and all those other pieces in place, make the financial side just as important. Make sure that stuff is set up correctly. Um, yeah. yeah. Good advice. That's yep. good advice. And it's, it's really one and the same, you know, the, the yeah. thing that you want people to do. And then the mistake is, is the same. It's, it's, it is, you know, it is. Yeah. We've, you know, we, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but we found that um, we try to put out consistent benchmarks and metrics so that folks can, can measure themselves. We have found that people tend to, our, our last report was, you know, less than 10% of people track the stuff that they need to track. Um, what, what are some of the metrics, some of the the KPIs and and things that 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 you wish people could would, would know about, and 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 some of the things that they can do as far as metrics, statistics to kind of get on the right side of things? Yeah, I think that's the big next step for people once they have their books in order is making sure they're tracking those metrics. And the big ones or the obvious ones are kind of the cost of product and materials. Um, cost of goods sold in general, cost of your employees and your staff are, is the other big thing. Um, and then just other general costs and, and making sure those are all in line with the industry. Like if you're, it, a lot of it is going to depend on your size and what stage you are as far as where those numbers need to be, but knowing what they are is important. And then bottom line is where I, I always start with people is you need to make sure you're building in a profit margin into your business. You don't want to be operating coming out to zero at the end of the day. You want to, you're building this business for it to be profitable. So make sure you, whatever you're creating a budget or planning, um, it's starting with prof, a, a profit margin already built in there. So we like to say at least a minimum of a 10% margin is what you should be shooting for. And as you get bigger, I mean, in this industry, um, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25% is not uncommon at all for profitability. So um you know, there's a lot of opportunity there and making sure those other pieces are in line are important. If your, um, you know, product and material costs are too high, that's just eating into your bottom line. So, you know, anywhere from 65 to 75% margin on those services is what we're looking at oftentimes. So costs of product and materials is usually, you know, ideally in the range of around 30% of revenue mm -hmm. um, is what we, we've seen at least. Um, and then, you know, employee costs are going to vary depending on the, the services you're offering. So, um, you know, we're, we're digging into our client base and analyzing some of these metrics and trying to get, you know, it's, it's important to see like what your service mix is, where, where's the most profitable pieces, what's the right mix to, of what you're offering your, your patients to make sure you're being as profitable as you can certain obviously certain services are going to be more profitable than, than others. So knowing right. those numbers for your business and what your costs are is hugely important to, to hit those, um, you know, bottom line metric numbers too. So um, is, 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 is there an, an area that you s see people tend to overspend on? Like what's, I, I you hear a lot about, uh, about personnel and then cost of goods and th things yeah. like that but like what like what is a one spot that's easy to kind of get upside down on if that makes sense yeah i think um something i've noticed is definitely like marketing costs can i mean marketing is a huge you know super important factor to your business and it's going to be key to growing and scaling and increasing revenue numbers but if that's not closely being monitored you can be throwing a lot of money away with ad spend and things like that if you're not working with the right people or you're not tracking it appropriately. So I think that money is very well spent in marketing. It's great to have a budget allocated for that, but just making sure that's being effectively utilized and you're seeing the ROI on that investment is, is important. Um, I think oftentimes we see a lot of money spent in, you know, capital improvements and things like that, which, which are also important. You want your, your spa to be aesthetically pleasing and things like that. But um, making sure you have the budget set aside for that. So sometimes those those expenses always seem to be 
um, a lot higher than they're planned to be, right? So obviously making yeah. sure you're planning for that extra 20% on what you budgeted for, I think is important with those type of expenditures. Um, so those are a couple areas I would say that are common uh, to, uh, to get away from people. Well, and, and you mentioned, you know, you mentioned marketing, which is, which I think is a great example. And there's really, you know, there's what you're spending on marketing and then what the ROI is on that, marketing, yeah. which is often difficult to, to, to track. Um, yeah. And I'm curious, like we've seen, you know, I've seen, I've seen some med spas spend 10% of revenue on marketing, which is, I've seen some spend five, some spend one or two. Is there... Yeah. Like, and I know it depends upon where you are in your business life cycle, what your, what yep. your service mix is, but what's a, what's a good, healthy kind of benchmark for marketing? To me, I think anywhere from, again, a lot of it depends on size and, and where you are in the life cycle. I, right. I think anywhere from two to 5% is a reasonable range. I mean, we've definitely seen some on the lower and some a little bit higher. Sure. Um, I would tend to say getting above that can be, would be a little high in a lot of cases, unless, unless you're seeing really good ROI in your your spend is really effective, then then great. Yeah, go for it. And you can absorb the new workload or, you know, new client load coming in. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a lot to be said first. More establishment spas can have a lower spend there and still see growth if they're doing, you know, really good, you know, rebookings are really high. You're fostering those patient relationships and you have a lot of reoccurring patients coming in. Um, maybe that spend doesn't need to be quite as high. So yeah. um, what's so your, yeah. what's your favorite KPI, your favorite metric, like the one you have tattooed to your back? <laughs> <laughs> um, question. Um, I mean, I think I have to say it's, it's profit margin. Um, yeah. you yeah. know, that's, that's the driver. It's like every percentage point you can add there is is more money going into your pocket as the business owner so yeah, or, sure. or it's more money that you can spend in other places to you know make sure you're keeping your your staff happy and um you know making it a good environment for them um i mean we all know that's that's been a challenge for all businesses is keeping keeping and retain hiring and retaining staff so um you know that that margin is hugely important. I think that's the that's the number one thing I would say is always the the key to be tracking. Uh, you heard it here first. Nick Ligori has profit margin tattooed to his back. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the name of your first boat, profit margin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Um, uh, well, so where can folks find you? If you know, there's there's going to be a lot of people who who need um, bookkeeping help, accounting help. Um, where can they find you? Where can, if they have more questions, where do they go? Yeah. So um, we, you can reach out to us. You can find us on the web at LagoriCPA.com. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn and, um, you know, social media platforms as well. So um, on our website, there's, you can contact us directly through there and you'll, you'll uh, be directed right to our team. Um, you know, we have a staff of bookkeepers, myself, um, and other professionals to to help as needed. So, um, so yeah, it'd be great to hear from anyone who needs our assistance. And uh, yeah, we're just one other note too. Our our team is all U.S. based. We have our clients all have a dedicated bookkeeper from our team. So you're always okay. working with the same person. So we really try and give you that personal touch as much much as possible. So that's awesome. Uh, that's all, yeah. And it's not a small thing. I mean, we've yeah. We've had issues, um, you know, bookkeeping is, is, is kind of a personal thing, right? It's gotta be, you know, it has yep. to be, it has to adapt to what you want through your business. So it's gotta be, it needs to be flexible and malleable and and personal at the same time. Right. hundred percent. Awesome. Well, um, appreciate it. You have made bookkeeping and accounting an enjoyable conversation to talk about. I appreciate your time. Um, I'll give you the last word. Um, you know, anything you want the folks to know, and then we'll, 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 we'll sign off uh, for this time. Yeah. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, yeah. My final word is just um, start preparing, make sure you have your, your uh, numbers in order as we come up to year end here and reach out to your financial professional. If you haven't heard from them in a while or you don't touch base with them regularly, reach out to them. Make sure you have a plan in place coming up to taxes in here. So um, that's my number one piece of advice. Stay on top of your numbers and, and prepare for the end of the year. Yeah. So, um, well, and and we have a saying compliance is cool. I was going to say we could do taxes are cool, but I don't know that that's going to work because I don't think people- Yeah, I don't see anyone getting that tattooed on their back anytime <laughs> no. soon. But... <laughs> no. 
All right, uh, Nick uh, from uh, Liguori Accounting, um, and that's L-I-G-U-O-R-I. We'll have this information on our site and on our on our podcast um, webpage as well. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate the the time. Um, what you provide is a well needed service, and especially in this industry. And so I hope hopefully folks will reach out to you and get the help they need. Yeah, thanks so much. We're thrilled to be part of Amspot and uh, looking forward to to the future. Awesome, sounds good. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Take care. Thank you for watching the Medical Spot Insider podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future videos and podcasts. For more information about the American Med Spa Association, please check our description below.